My name's Hugh Alexander Jackman. I was formerly a pastor and for many years I've been a presenter on Christian television. As a young lad, I had a brief stint in the boxing ring and ever since then, I've always kept a bit of a passion for the game of boxing. Watching bouts over the years, something has come to my attention that I'm sure has played a major factor throughout boxing history. The best way for me to describe it is the faith component. Welcome to a special Spirit and Life. Boxing archives are replete with accounts of huge boxing upsets that seem to defy all the odds. Time and time again we've seen the boxing world stunned by a shock defeat in every division. Perhaps this is because we've missed some very important elements in the build-up to the fight. He said all week, Jim, he said there, he said he's beat, he feels that this is a gift from God. Man, I just want to thank God for giving me this victory. Without him, this wouldn't have been possible. So many were shocked at the result of the Joshua Ruiz fight. Personally, I was disappointed for AJ, but not surprised. Because there's one thing that boxing history has taught me over the years, it's that a man who believes he has the power of God on his side is a very, very hard man to beat. Ruiz mixes it up. Ruiz comes to fire back. And Joshua, this can turn your back on your opponent. Well, he said there, and you can hear him, Sergio. He said, are you ready? The date was the 9th of November 1996, the venue the MGM Grand, Las Vegas. It was hailed as the super fight of the century. Evander Holyfield enters the arena wearing a sash embroidered with the scripture from the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. In case you don't know what it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The result? Holyfield pulls off an incredible victory over Mike Tyson, which shocks the boxing world and fans everywhere. It was a night I would never personally forget. In fact, I've often referred to that fight from the pulpit. Anyone who understands the power of those words that Holyfield had strapped across his chest would understand that whoever would be fighting against him would not just be fighting against a man, but you're fighting against a man who has faith in the power of God. George Foreman, in his heyday, he was renowned for possessing the hardest punch in boxing. In the fight known as the Rumble in the Jungle, George lost his title to the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. After that humiliating defeat in the Rumble in the Jungle, George goes into a deep time of depression. He didn't realize it at the time, but his loss to Ali was just the push that he needed to start him on a journey to a new life. Knowing there's a living God and that he even would even appear and let me know that he was alive. It just broke my heart. I had a second chance to live. George may have lost to Ali, however, he still seems to be winning the fight of life, reinventing himself as a modern day phenomenon of boxing and the business world. Armed with his newfound faith in Jesus Christ, the born again, heavy set burger giant called George Foreman would go on to achieve the unsurmountable goal of becoming the heavyweight champion of the world at the great age 
of 45. That is the face of shock and awe there. Joe Cortez finishes the count of 10. George Foreman looks up at the heavens. He, he is once again down on his knees to pray. So what about the faith component in more recent times? Well, we talked about Mike Tyson already. Let's focus our attention on another Tyson. Not Mike, but Fury. His world dominating campaign began after that stupefying victory over Vladimir Klitschko. And the Lord Jesus Christ had this day plan for me. And I will glorify his name by giving his win to him. In the mighty name of Jesus, I won this tonight. Becoming champion of the world all seemed a bit too much for the 27-year-old Tyson. Pretty soon, he began to lose a battle both against mental health, depression and drugs. Still undefeated in the ring, he retires from boxing. Then, the comeback. The mark is back. There was a time when the fire was out. I didn't want to box anymore, I didn't like boxing. Well, now I've got the um, burning flame back inside of me. Tyson finally regains his peace in the Lord Jesus Christ, sheds a massive load of weight, and now he wants his titles back. There was only one battle that the boxing world really wanted to see. What you got to say about that, Deontay? What you got to say about that, my man? Hold on a second. Let's keep this civil here. Would you like to fight? We all know Tom Fury. You just, you just a phony man. This is just for act. You know where I am, you know what time, you know what place. I ain't scared of nobody. I come in your backyard, baby, for that, my man. I promise Listen, you that. Anytime, any you, place, When you up anywhere, in the ring with a real when fighter, ready, when you ain't fought with a real fighter, that's when what it's ready, all about, man. Squad, no bother, no. Wilder, he was the scary boogeyman shouting, <laughs> a monstrous puncher who had literally destroyed everyone in his path. Tyson, on the other hand, appears to be a bit of a jokey, overweight, karaoke singer who claimed to have overcome his mental illness. But now, there seems to be a very serious side to Fury. You're not going to be talking to Deontay Wilder. You're not going to be looking in the eyes of Deontay Wilder. Who am I going to be looking in the eyes of? You're going to be looking in the eyes of the Bronze Bomber. You're going to feel him as well too, just like the feeling that you feel him now. Is Mr. that like an alter ego or something? Or is it a... Uh, is it well alive? Is it like a spirit that comes into you, or what is it? A, uh, it could be an alter, it, it can be an alter ego. It can, it can be a spirit. I, I, you know, it may be an ancestry spirit. Who knows? A part of Nigerian I don't, as well I don't too. believe in all that stuff at well, all. I do because That's Jesus the, Christ is my savior, and I don't believe in all spirits and alter egos. And even mentioning stuff like that on TV, you're getting it. And, and honestly. And that's the difference if God is with me, me and you. nobody can be against me. And if you're entering spirits and stuff into your body, you can't win. You've already lost. You can't beat me. I sit here today as a sincere man who tells the truth and I have nothing behind no curtains. I'm beating you. One million percent. I've not got no doubts. Even after all the time off, you can't beat me and ten more like you can't beat me. See, the difference between me and you, you got your, your mind, you explore it narrowly. I'm an open-minded person. What you believe in, I may not believe in. What I believe in, you may not believe in. That's just the case that you just showed to me. 100%. But that's the thing about it. Just like I feel like I'm a better fighter, you may feel like you're a better fighter than me. I don't feel it. You say you know it. I know it. Tyson openly acknowledges Christ. Yet Deontay, who proclaims himself as the son of a pastor, fails to acknowledge Jesus as his Lord. Then... After a tactical nightmare of a fight, for Deontay, a wobbly-legged Tyson lands a beautiful combination. And then, it's time for the bomb squad. Dancing his way to a neutral corner after knocking Fury down for a second and hopefully a final time. Then this. <laughs> then this. The decision was a draw. Wilder remains the champion, although Fury gains equal footing within the WBC. 
This isn't a victory for Tyson or Wilder, but it may just be a victory for the power of God. To that question, Pierce, I have no idea. <laughs> it must have been a divine intervention because I looked to be unconscious on the canvas and I just woke up. I'm looking at when I did the combination special with the left hook, mm -hmm. and I, I'm looking at his eyes rolling in the back of his head like the sun setting, you know. I'm like, it's over, it's over. So when I'm seeing him rise up like he did, you know. One of the things while me opening my mouth, being surprised, another thing go, went through my head like, if you don't believe in God and think he's real, look at that. Promise. Now Tyson isn't the only one to have benefited from the faith component. Again, we have seen this scenario play out a thousand times in different divisions around the world. Let's come down in the weights now and see how the faith component plays out there. Undefeated and yes, sometimes controversial, Floyd Money Mayweather has achieved more in recent years than any other fighter. Now with a historical record of 51 fights without defeat, Floyd Mayweather is without a doubt one of the greatest of all times, or as he likes to put it, the best ever. But does he have a secret? You see, I've noticed something about Floyd. Even when the commentators try to take him on a different track, Floyd never fails to give God thanks. But first off, I gotta thank God for this victory. My team, Team Mayweather. First off, I wanna thank God for this victory. Yes, even the brash millionaire playboy bling infested money covered Mayweather knows who his God is and openly thanks him for millions and millions around the globe to see. So did the faith component have something to do with his amazingly successful career? We'll leave it there. You decide. Andre Ward retires from boxing in 2017. At that point, he was the reigning IBF, WBA and WBO light heavyweight champion. He was also rated pound for pound as number one. Perhaps it's coincidental, but Andre retires at 33 years old. The very age, according to the Bible, that Jesus Christ concluded his work on earth. And what about that nickname? Andre S.O.G. Ward. You guessed it, son of God. It seems that Andre had a habit of walking on water both in and out of the ring. Nigel Benn, formerly the Dark Destroyer in recent years, has become more of a darkness destroyer. Nigel achieved incredible things as a boxer, but as a man, today he would tell you that his greatest successes have come since finding the Lord Jesus Christ. Another God-fearing pugilist to keep an eye out for today is Terence Bud Crawford. I've been watching this man for some years now. Again, Bud's story outside the ring is a typical one. He was young and brash, having a lot of fun. A very close shave with some very unsavory characters left him shot in the back of the head. I got shot right here. I got hit with the first shot and I was just like, damn, I was like, man, I'm shot. The doctors said I was lucky, being that the distance that the projectile was fired from and the window that made the bullet tumble, instead of going straight, that it was God. Because I wasn't the only one that got shot that night. A friend got shot and it shattered his whole arm. That near-death moment brought him closer to God than ever. And now, well, Bud never seems to go in the ring without him. It's a story we've seen played out time and time again. It seems that most of the time, the one who is prepared to speak boldly and declare his faith in Jesus either seems to come up victorious or they manage to achieve stupendous things both in and outside the ring. Talking about smaller men, the final mention must go to the amazing Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. 
a legend in the sport, a future Hall of Famer. The Pac-Man is the only boxer in history to win 12 major world titles in 8 different weight divisions from 112 to 147 pounds. Manny is a revered leader, senator and humanitarian in the Philippines. Manny was enjoying his fame, his fortune, women, cars and life when dramatically, just like the Apostle Paul, he heard literally the voice of God. And then after that I heard the voice of God and son why you, why you leave me, why you keep away from me. Mm. Because in that time um, I always, you know, I love partying, gambling, womanizing, everything, everything but I'm always praying. Wow. I'm always praying, I know, at least five times a day I'm praying but I'm doing these things, you know, wow. uh, but you know, when, when God changed my heart, I realized those things that, you know, I'm, if I, I died five years ago or six years ago, I'm pretty sure I'm not, in, I'm not going to, to heaven, wow. I'm, I'm going to hell. People said he wouldn't be the same after that. They said he would be too soft that somehow he would lose his killer instinct. And then, at the age of 40, this. Manny wins his 12th world title against the younger favorite, Keith Thurman. The list seems to go on and on. Time will not permit me to tell the whole story of all the boxers who put their faith in Jesus. So I'm not going to try. However, in closing, let me say this. After years of studying the fight game, I've come to a final conclusion that the faith component in boxing is as real as God is. Perhaps it's as real as the individual's faith in God will allow it to be. The Bible is replete with accounts of men who went to battle against their enemies. Biblically speaking, Victory is always achieved by those who carry before them the name of the Lord and the banner of God. See you next time on Spirit and Life. Bye-bye.